that in your word you give us of yourself. Your word is life, <coughs> eternal life. And we are thankful that when we hear your word, we are motivated to trust and obey. We are thankful, Father, for this hour, an hour in which we can gather around your word. And we ask, Father, that you would hide me behind your dear cross, that these, your children, your people, your flock, will hear what you desire for them to hear in spite of what I may do or say. In the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Our message comes from passages of scripture that was read as part of the lectionary passage of scriptures uh, this morning from the Gospel according to John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 17. And we want to highlight just a few verses of that chapter in that passage uh, as one of the most important things that a person on earth can do. Listen very carefully, because whatever you want to be, you must be what the Bible says you've got to be. And I'm reading from John, the third chapter, these two verses, in context with the other 15 verses from the New King James Version of our Bible and reads thusly. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he or she cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 7. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Now in your Bibles, uh, born again uh, is born anew, uh, born from above. Regenerated, converted, all of those words that you sometimes hear uh, clergy in particular say that can be confusing uh, about what is the nature of being born again, of being born from above, or being born anew. But for the title, we want to emphasize what you must be. And these words around the thought of a must be as the title is truly something you want to make sure that you get a good grasp on. You must be. And anytime you see uh, the word must in God's scripture, please pay close attention to that. Because there is no argument on what has to occur if you want the benefit of God's word and his relationship with you and you to him. You must be born anew. You must be born again. You must be born of the spirit. You must be Born from above, you must be born of God. How is it that we are born again? Uh, this is a question that Nicodemus 
us ask Jesus as he went to him by night and said, we, Jesus, we, we, we know that you are a man sent from God, that God is with you because you're doing all of these great things. And Jesus cut to the chase because he wanted to make sure that Nicodemus and we cut through the chase on what we ought to be in life. While we're here, while we have time, uh, we must be born again. Nicodemus did not understand that. He thought, well, what are you talking about? Uh, will I have to go into my mother's womb and be born again? Uh, no, he's not talking about that at all. He's talking about being born of the Spirit or born from above or being born spiritually again from a wrong relationship, a separated relationship from God into a right relationship with God. When you read your Bibles and you start in Genesis, you will note that something happened to Adam and Eve when they decided to disobey God. God had warned them in the second chapter, verse 17, that if you choose to disobey and eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, in that day you will surely die. And if you ask some of the civil feathers who are now Genesis experts, they will tell you that if you go to the fifth chapter of Genesis, there's a litany of names there. Adam, his sons, Methuselah, the, who lived to be a nine, 969 years. But one thing is common throughout that chapter, and he died. And he died. It was a physical death that was noted by those who were there. It's a tangible to the uh, eyes and to the touch. That's physical death that occurred because of sin, but a greater death occurred on that day that Adam and Eve decided to disobey God. They ate of it, and they died a spiritual death. Sin separates us from God. It puts us not in a right relationship with Him. And everyone who has sinned separated from God aside from being saved. They're spiritually dead. And we need a rebirthing of that spirit. The Bible says, God's word says in Romans 3 and 23 that we all have sinned fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have sinned. If you just sinned just once in your life, or whether or not you have sinned many times in your life, like I have, when we sin, we separate ourselves from God. We need to be reborn again the most innocent of child coming into the world, and the most hardened of criminals, all need to be saved. Because we are spiritually dead aside from the salvation that only Christ provides. Mm. to this because I believe the youngsters here need to get a full understanding of that. 
that we cannot save ourselves if we want to be a part of God's family, if we want a right relationship with God, if we want to be joined to God for an eternity, if we want to go to heaven when we pass from this life to the next, if we want to be born again, if we want to be born anew, if we want to be born from above, then we all start with knowing that we have sinned and that we need salvation and that no other power can save us but by the blood of Christ. That He is Savior and Savior alone, regardless of what other faiths may say. Jesus said He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And by this he means that when we come to a point where we realize that we need saving and that there is no other salvation available but unto us but by Christ and we surrender to that truth we accept by faith his saving grace unto us and that's when we are born again. Ephesians 2 and 8 says it is by his grace, our faith, and that we are saved. If not, we continue to sin the way we sin apart from that defining moment in our lives where we receive Christ as our personal Savior the wedges of sin is death. That is Romans 6 and 23. We all, at one time or another, have worked our way apart from God. And in that separation, which produces spiritual death, that is what we are being paid for. We have to come to a point that we need saving. Whether you are two years old, a 92 years old, we all need saving. You must be saved, Jesus says. The Word of God says you must be born again. And at the moment of accepting that fact that we are all sinners, that we have sinned, that I have sinned, and we need salvation, and what he did upon yonder's cross, on Calvary's cross, was enough to save us. And we believe that in our hearts, that on that cross he was slain for us and he was put in a grave for us and then he arose from up for us. And that if we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths, then we shall be saved. That is a simple, simple truth. You don't have to run around the church and spit three times. You don't have to get yourself all cleaned up. I, I, I've heard it. Well, Pastor, I'll come as soon as I quit drinking. I'll come when my days of bar hopping. I'll come when I really feel as though that I'm worthy to come. I'll come when there's a bolt of lightning that strikes me and I'll come if I'm in an accident, a car accident, and I walk away on stage. I'll come if you're waiting. All that may be good. I'll come if I'm to the right of politics. I'm conservative. I'll come if I'm to the left of politics. I'll come when my mama comes to church and she can see me there. I'll come. There is no time constraints on this. 
The time is now that you must be saved. It is a must be, per the gospel of God, you must be born again. I'm for whatever gets you to that point. If it takes a car accident and you getting out of that accident unscathed, that's fine if it gets you there. If it takes you coming to Sunday school, a confirmation class, it takes you going to Sunday school, if it takes something traumatic happening in your life, that, that, that's, that's good and what you must be born again is what Jesus is saying here. No matter what good works you're doing or whatever your profession is, you must be born again. It is a must be. And, and, and that will go to your grave with. Are you saved? Are you saved? And I asked that to ask yourself, am I saved? Can you say that? Am I saved? Am I saved? Truly saved, am I saved? Because Jesus is saying, every one of us must be saved. We must be born again. We must be born anew. We must be born from above. We must be born of God again. Our dead spirits must have come alive by the power of the Holy Spirit only after we have accepted hmm, the gift that God gives us. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It is a gift. Salvation is a gift. Being born from above is a gift. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. No matter how good looking you are, that does not matter. No matter how ugly you are, that does not matter. No matter where you live, it does, that does not matter. It is a gift. Whether you were born Cheyenne or whether you are Choctaw or whether you are whether you are Hispanic, whether you are uh, African American, African American, whether you are Trump supporters, or whether you are, it, it doesn't matter whether you're a school teacher, whether you're a construction worker, whether you're a preacher, whether you are a doctor or a lawyer, it does not matter. What matters is, is that you are born again. You must be. Born again. That, 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 that's it. You must have come to a point where you accepted that I need salvation and Christ heals me that. By simply accepting the gift. We gave you popcorn. You could have said, no, I don't want it. Right? That's the gift that we extended to you. You could either say, yes, I accept it, or no. That is our free will to accept salvation. It is a gift. We cannot earn it. It is a gift that God gives us to either accept or reject for the salvation, the eternal salvation of our souls. It's a must be. Hmm. It's a must be. You can be a daisy. You must be born again. You can be a brownie. You must be born again. You can be a what is it, a junior? Huh? A cadet? A senior? An ambassador? You must be born again. You can be like Rudy, bilingual. You must be born again. You can be like me, a mutt. You must be born again. You can be a king over many nations. You must be born again. You can be a bum on the streets. You must be born again. You can be in prison or out of prison. You must be born again. You can be like Beatrice, who is the oldest living Wichita. I call her Beatrice, that's between her and I. You can be like Bernice, White Feather, the oldest living Wichita. 
For blood which is top, you must be born again. You can sing like Lord Duck, the Cherokee songs that they sung on the trail of tears. You must be born again. You must be born from, a, from God above. He must have come into your heart only if you let him in as a gift. And at that moment that you accept him as personal savior, something miraculous happens. Just like you cannot tell where the wind comes and where it goes, you can only see the effects of it. It's like that. You cannot explain it, but the Holy Spirit does something to us when we accept Christ as our personal Savior. The Holy Spirit, which has always been with us as power, He now becomes now indwelling in us. Hmm? And He baptizes us into the body of Christ and we become the children of God. It is a gift. It is His grace that He now infills us and gives us the power to resist that which is evil. So that we may see the kingdom of God. That we may enter into the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit does his miraculous work within us. And now we can fight against the powers of evil. Now we can live an eternal life. Not just in the here and in, in the by and by. But the sweet now and now. That we can go through this life victorious, that no matter what stage we're in, no matter where we are at in this world, no matter how bad we feel or good we feel, we know that there is a sweet assurance that when we close our eyes in this death, in the death that separates us from this physical world, we have a life, a spiritual life with God that is that so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have the everlasting life. Mm, because we are born again. It is a must be. If you want to reach a fullness in this life and the life to come, you must be born again. When we are born again, we can see the kingdom of God. We can see God in every circumstance. We realize that God, word is true, that he will never leave us or forsake us. No matter how dire the circumstance, God is with us. We can see that his holy hand, his precious hand, his kind hand, his patient hand is with us. When we are born again, we can realize that God is God. He's just awesome and he has never ever and never will leave his children alone. We can see that. We can see God in all the ups and downs that we have. We can see God while we're in the jailhouse. We can see God while we're in the schoolhouse. We can see God while we're on the corner. We can see God while we're in the supermarket. We can see God in our bathroom. We can see God while watching paint dry. Because he has given us his Holy Spirit as a gift that's now entwelling in us that we can see things in a different light. A new light. Those who are natural cannot see the spiritual things of life. Cannot. But those who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, we can see God because we have been born again from on high. We can see heavenly things, not just the hellish things. We can see God in every circumstances. And when we can see God in every circumstance, no matter how bad we feel, no matter how dire it may be, no matter how bleak it may seem, no matter how lonely we may feel, no matter how hurt we are, we can always say, I see God because he has indwelt in me, the Holy Spirit, so now I can see him and I can obey him, trust and obey, I can obey him and give him thanks in all circumstances. 
You cannot do that if you're not indwelt by the Holy Spirit. If you are not indwelt by the Holy Spirit unless you have received Christ as your Holy Savior. Unless you have been born again. There is a must be. You can be a lot of things in this life. But Jesus is saying you must be born again. You can be what God has given you the ability to be. I can be a chicken. I can be an eagle that soars. I can be a bear. I can be a butterfly. I can be a daisy. I can be an ambassador. I can be a mom. I can be a dad. All of those things are good in terms of how we go through here in this world. But Jesus is saying, you must be. You must be born. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. 